Remember Spider-Man's black suit, which he adorns as part of the parasitic takeover? Yes, that was the first time that Marvel introduced a symbiote. The black suit went on to find Eddie Brock and transform into Venom, and fans were presented with the idea of alien symbiotes. But according to the backstory, symbiotes have been around for over a billion years. They were created on the planet Clintar by a god named Null. As parasites, their sole purpose seems to be to conquer the universe. One of the most threatening among these symbiotes is Grendel, and he is famous not just in Venom's world, but also in Thors. Let's explore Grendel's origins and why he is one of the most formidable symbiotes out there. Now before we get into it, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you very much, now let's begin. A detailed history and backstory of Grendel. Grendel was among the first symbiotes created by Null to vanquish universes, kill other gods, and also spread darkness by extinguishing celestial lights. While most other symbiotes were parasites, Grendel did not need hostile takeover of bodies to survive. Oh, and did we mention that Grendel was a dragon? Yes, Null created symbiote dragons using his own blood, and Grendel was one of the most powerful ones. He was black in colour as he was formed from integral matter of the living abyss with yellow or sometimes glaring red eyes. So let's dig a little more into Grendel's origin story and how he emerged to be Venom's most significant nemesis. We got a glimpse of Grendel's origin story in Scream Curse of Carnage when Scream intercepts the black goo from the sewers. She says she saw God but in reality she witnesses Null creating two symbiote dragons. Grendel and Big Mother. The dragons travel across the universe, destroying life from one planet to the other. Finally, they unleashed havoc in their wake on Earth in the 6th century, which was also the Viking Age. The dragons annihilated cities, killing thousands and setting fire to everything that crossed their path. According to Null, he found the humans on Earth too weak to put up any resistance, and the only thing that attracted him to this planet was the light it emitted. The Vikings prayed to Beowulf to come to their rescue. But their screams were heard by Thor, the Asgardian god of thunder who rushed to their aid. A nerve-wrecking battle ensued between Grendel and Thor. Wielding the power of Mjolnir, Thor rained lightning on Grendel and locked him in a glacier. He then moved on to defeat Big Mother too, ending the domination of the symbiotes on Earth. But Grendel's story didn't end just there. At the peak of the Vietnam War in 1965, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. uncovered the glacier, where Grendel's frozen body lay in a dormant state for over a millennium. And as we very well know, S.H.I.E.L.D. is always looking to manipulate celestial or alien objects to create weapons to fight their wars. In this case, S.H.I.E.L.D. was looking for replacements for a missing Captain America and found a way to extract the living abyss from Grendel's body. They then used this biomatter to combine it with the bodies of injured soldiers to create super soldiers. Thus Grendel's living abyss formed his offshoots, who took the soldiers' bodies as their hosts. And guess who headed this sim soldier program? Yes, the entire program proceeded under the watchful eye of Nick Fury himself. But S.H.I.E.L.D. was in for trouble, for they didn't understand the full extent of what they had done, as usual. The dormant body of Grendel was actually alive, and his offshoots were connected to him, just like the hive mind. Now, S.H.I.E.L.D. faced a dire situation to control not only Grendel, but also the offshoots. They tried various experiments on the dragon to find a way to kill it, but the effects of these experiments were felt by the super soldiers, causing them to run rampant and massacre people in their way. Finally, S.H.I.E.L.D. found a way to keep both Grendel and the offshoots in a latent state. They locked the dragon with his subdued offshoots in a remote location and immediately shut down the Sim Soldier program. But did Grendel stay imprisoned forever? No, absolutely not. The big showdown of Grendel coming back to power and his eventual end came during his fight with Venom. With S.H.I.E.L.D.'s downfall, the remotely locked up Grendel and his offshoots were being moved to another location. By this time, the transport was interjected by Venom, who was tipped off by Rex Strickland, a Vietnam veteran, and thought he was trying to save the other super soldiers. But Venom unwittingly ended up waking up Grendel. He watched the dragon rip apart the super soldiers to fuse back with his symbiotes, but there was one symbiote that was still missing from making Grendel whole again. Yes, that's right, Rex, aka Tyrannosaurus Symbiote, who was the last of the offshoots to go into hiding to avoid unifying with the dragon. Nonetheless, Grendel regains his power and re-establishes his connection with Null. He continues on his mission of destroying cities and this time unleashes his wrath on Manhattan. Venom unites with Spider-Man to fight the dragon using Spidey's Venom Blast. Grendel swallows Spider-Man, who then lets loose the Venom Blast inside Grendel's mouth. But instead of killing Grendel, it makes way for Null to use the Living Abyss to create an avatar of himself. He then reconstructs Grendel's body around Spider-Man, Venom and himself while narrating the story of how he produced and can control symbiotes across the universe. 
Venom and Spider-Man have a daring escape from Null's prison and Venom goes on to find the missing piece of Grendel's offshoots. Venom convinces Rex that the only chance they have of defeating Grendel is by merging their two symbiotes and fighting as one strong unit. The two combine forces and call out Grendel and the Null Avatar. Using sonic grenades, the merged Venom and offshoots weaken Grendel, bringing out Null. They try using sonic blasts to bring down Null, but the King in Black is too dominant for them. Instead, Null separates Venom and the offshoots from Eddie. He then tries to amalgamate Grendel with Venom and the offshoot, but Eddie sets off the sonic grenades simultaneously. The sound from the explosives disrupts Null, and Venom takes this opportunity to go back into Eddie's body. Meanwhile, the offshoot binds himself across a weakened Grendel and forces him into a burning hot furnace, and this kills him. Thus, this ends Grendel's story. What a nail-biting end that was. So this is what we know from Grendel's origin story. Firstly, he was among the first dragons Null created, giving him deific powers. Null wheels the dragon around and can also feel, see and sense through him. Null is also the hive mind that controls Grendel and the other symbiotes and makes him do his bidding. Null is known as the god of symbiotes after all. Secondly, Grendel can create an army of symbiotes using the abyss from his body, which is interesting because the entire army becomes part of the hive mind and hence Null's warriors. It makes us wonder if Null ended up making a other god, only this one is controlled by Null himself. And Grendel has stayed alive in various forms through the symbiotes created using his biomass, giving his existence an exciting arc. Even after his downfall in the fiery furnace, some form of him was left behind. Let's see if Grendel's iterations and offshoots have had the same sort of power, or if they were a diluted version of him. Exploring the major iterations and offshoots of Grendel. We have already discussed the first of Grendel's offshoots, the Sim Soldiers and Tyrannosaurus, and how the latter ended up killing Grendel by burning him in the furnace. But here is an interesting part of the story. Some of Grendel's biomatter survived and was discovered by Dr. Reed Richards, aka the Maker. The Maker stored the sample for research and to stabilize a version of the Venom symbiote, but unfortunately the Cult of Null stole the sample. Fun fact. The Cult of Null also had symbiotic matter from the Living Abyss in them, which had landed on Earth after Thor defeated Grendel. Scorn, a member of the Cult who was highly influenced by Null, unites Grendel's biomatter with the dead body of Cletus Cassidy post his Carnage symbiote's destruction. She believes that this would allow Null to use his body as an avatar, but Null and Cletus both try to fight for control over the reincarnated body. Additionally, Grendel's offshoot rips apart the symbiotic codices from Scorn and absorbs it within Cletus' body. At the same time, some of the leftover Carnage symbiote from Cletus also merges with the Grendel symbiote, giving birth to the Dark Carnage. With memories of Carnage taking over Grendel's offshoot, the connection with Null is severed. Now Cletus wants Null to be freed from his imprisonment and become the next King in Black, but in order to restore his connection with Null, the Dark Carnage has to assimilate as many codices as possible, so where does he find them? Any guesses? So we know that the Sim Soldier program was shut down after S.H.I.E.L.D.'s massive failure with the Super Soldiers, but it's not all over for them yet. Weapon Plus, a program funded by the US government, puts up a sneaky show and gets their hand on the symbiotic samples. They continue their research on the codices, calling their weapons program Weapons 5. Their research helps them understand the connection of the offshoots with the hive mind. They then start manipulating the samples and are able to find a way to cut off the connection and fashion bio body suits from the symbiote codices. In his search to reconnect with the hive mind, the Dark Carnage finds the Weapon V facility and wreaks havoc, killing many people. The program is therefore put on hold and all codices are locked up in stasis to keep them hidden from Carnage's attempts. Later, Alchemax, a company created by Norman Osborn under disguise, comes in possession of the biosuits and uses the codices from them to manufacture the anti-venom armors. So clearly the Grendel genetics have travelled a considerable timeline across the Marvel Universe. As we mentioned earlier, Grendel is one of the most dynamic symbiotes and his iterations and offshoots shoots also possessed significant potency. Of course, they were no match to Grendel himself, but what is the extent of the powers that Grendel possesses? Here is what we've learned from the comics. What makes the Grendel symbiote so powerful? We know that Grendel was created to be a symbiote without requiring a host, which we think is one of the most prominent attributes. So like other symbiotes, Grendel didn't need a host to unleash the full extent of its powers, and we've seen how in the movie, Venom had to go through a series of hosts before forming the perfect symbiosis with Eddie. Grendel has a massive anatomy. He has been described as being around 40 feet tall. Additionally, Null's blood adorned him with godlike abilities, including tremendous strength, hyperspeed, super stamina, agility, and durability. Besides these, Grendel also possessed quick healing or regenerative powers like Venom and other symbiotes. Furthermore, Grendel also uses his teeth, 
fangs and claws to assault his enemies. It seems like he's unbeatable. No wonder Thor had to ascend from Asgard to fight him. When Null created the dragons, he wanted to send them across the universe. Hence, both Grendel and Big Mother had interstellar flying capabilities, and that too at hypersonic speeds. Since Grendel constitutes the living abyss, he has the power to develop offshoots and other symbiotes just like Null. However, these offshoots need host bodies to survive. Moreover, Grendel's offshoots could possess dead bodies, as we saw in Cassidy's case. Another super ability that Grendel has is the ability to shift forms, like other symbiotes. He can branch out and use his tendrils to attack his enemies. Even Null has used this ability to engulf Spider-Man and Venom while restructuring Grendel around them. So with all of these super capabilities, who do you think would win in a battle between Grendel and Venom? Is Grendel stronger than Venom? Well, technically in the fight between Grendel and Venom, it was eventually Grendel's own offshoot, Rex, who killed him while Venom was caught in between saving Eddie and himself. But do you think Venom could defeat Grendel without Rex or Spider-Man's support? Maybe not. When Venom attacks Grendel's transport van, he witnesses Grendel reabsorb the other symbiotes into himself by tearing them apart from the super soldiers with ease. Venom knows that Grendel feeds on symbiotes, which means he could just as quickly kill Venom. Yet, Venom and Eddie decide to go up against Grendel and find a way to stop him from destroying Manhattan. However, he knows he cannot do it alone and takes Spider-Man's support and as we all know that's how the story ends. The important thing to remember here is that most things that affect Grendel also affect Venom since they're both symbiotes. For instance, both Grendel and Venom are susceptible to sound and heat at varied frequencies. Hence, Venom has few to no options to defeat Grendel. But a fascinating part of the story is that when Null's avatar meets Spider-Man and Venom, he alters Venom, giving him dragon wings, as seen in the Venom comics. And although Venom can strongly feel the hive mind and often lose control of himself, to Null, he does resist Null's power, so Venom might just have the potential to fight Grendel, but not without some help. Our conclusion, however, is that Grendel is definitely more powerful than Venom, and we would love to see him return for another fight. Maybe they can bring Null and his dragons back for an Avengers reunion, with Venom playing a pivotal role. But the other hero who definitely defeated Grendel single-handedly was Thor, so let's take a closer look at that battle. Is Grendel vulnerable against Thor's Mjolnir? Thor's Mjolnir has proven to be a powerful weapon in the Marvel Universe, and only those who are worthy can wield its power. The only Avengers who were able to lift Mjolnir were Thor, Captain America, and Vision. Thor uses Mjolnir to bring down the full power of thunder and lightning to strike his enemies, and almost all his adversaries are susceptible to electricity, including the almighty symbiote Grendel. As we know, Grendel and Big Mother had laid waste to thousands of civilizations. They'd also killed gods as they did Null's bidding to conquer the universe. It was only in the 6th century that they reached Earth. Somewhere in Denmark, they built their hideout behind a waterfall, where they would return after every attack. On Earth, they killed millions, scourging cities and killing humans and animals alike. This was when Thor caught Grendel's whiff. One of Grendel's weaknesses is high voltage electricity and well, Thor is known as the God of Thunder. So Thor engages in a battle with Grendel and defeats the dragon using the power of his hammer. Thor sends across a giant bolt of lightning using Mjolnir to weaken Grendel's attack and then engulfs him in a glacier. Mjolnir's blow was so powerful that even Null felt it as he describes to Venom and Spider-Man, Your thunder god unleashed a power I had never before felt on all the worlds I had wrapped my horde around. And in the blink of an eye, he stabbed it like a billion needles in our hearts. It also ended up severing Null's connection with the symbiotes, leading to Null's imprisonment in the Dark Abyss. So Grendel is definitely vulnerable against Mjolnir, but the one thing we would like to highlight is that Grendel is probably vulnerable against Thor himself. In Thor Ragnarok, when Hela discovers Mjolnir, Thor finds a way to exercise the power of lightning without his beloved hammer. He could probably use the same force against Grendel and Null without needing Mjolnir at all. Wouldn't that be a fight worth watching? What are some of the other major weaknesses of Grendel? Is it easier to defeat an enemy with only one weakness or many? Well, that's a debate for the comments section, but for now, let's focus on Grendel's weakness, or should we say, weaknesses. We know Grendel has godlike powers similar to Null, but he has a few weaknesses, although limited. His first and most dire weakness, as we saw when Thor defeated him, is electricity. Even Spider-Man had used electric blasts, which he called the Venom Blasts, to weaken Grendel's attack and transform him into a disrupted nebulous form. High frequency sounds have been Symbiote's biggest weakness. We have seen how Spidey's black suit disconnected from him, with the bell ringing continuously. Even Venom had discarded Eddie when it came to high frequency pitches. Similarly, Grendel too is affected by loud noises, which we saw when Spidey and Venom used sonic grenades to weaken him. Another symbiotic weakness that also affects Grendel is fire, which also leads to its eventual downfall when his face
released by Venom. However, Grendel is more resistant than most other symbiotes to fire. For instance, when he's attacking Manhattan, the US Air Force is blasting grenades on and around him, and it doesn't affect the dragon as much. It was only when the sonic grenade went off that he was destabilized. Of course, one can debate how fire-breathing dragons can be susceptible to fire, but as we said, small amounts of fire don't affect Grendel. Grendel has given us a lot to think about, traveling between the Marvel universes and bringing us some epic fights. He's undoubtedly an extremely daunting symbiote introduced by the comics and seems to be on a continued journey through his offshoots. It'll be interesting to see what happens next with Grendel and if he'll ever be resurrected. What do you guys think about this mighty symbiote? Share your thoughts in the comments section below.